Hello. Fear the me uh, cat here. Uh, see, I'm getting a bit tired of that introduction. Um, I might change this at some point. Anyway, um, hello. And we are continuing with the 26th episode of this Let's Play. Still quite a few things to do in this room. This room just has has a lot of stuff in it. It's a fairly boring room and alright. Cards on the table. I didn't enjoy recording this episode and I'm probably not gonna have that much to say or feel that enthusiastic about it. I will try. I know it's my job to entertain you here uh, whilst recording this thing and I'll do my best but I'm, I'm just, I, I, I'm just going to go and do the best I can with this recording, but I may not sound as amazing as I usually do, but I so so myself. Uh, it's, you can't really attack the, those folks while still carrying that box. I don't remember if it breaks or not, but you can't. So <laughs> pink coffee whilst doing this. Perhaps I shouldn't, but I am. So, uh, I've cut out a lot of mistakes I've made. This episode. A lot went wrong. A heck of a lot went wrong. Uh, not with the actual recording process itself. Uh, this is the last goal one we have to release, by the way. But yeah, not with the actual recording process itself, but just with um, with stuff that can that can go wrong whilst playing. I died a lot. I got confused about where to go and what to do, even though I had the strategy guide, so I shouldn't have done. I even ended up redoing one of the puzzles that I'd already done. I'll talk about that more at the time. But yeah, I eventually ended up getting 1 hour and 20 minutes of footage. So I've had to cut it down to 35 minutes, and 35 minutes is the best I could do. Um, normally I try to keep them at 25, though perhaps I should consider putting it up to 30 minutes whilst I'm in the dungeons, just to get them up to three episodes each. So I'm not stuck with a 35 minute episode at the end. But I had a choice. I could either let this go on as long as it's supposed to or stop somewhere around just before the boss and then have a 10 minute, uh, 10 minutes in the dungeon for the next episode. And that, that didn't really seem right. That didn't seem like the right thing to do. I wanted to get closure on this dungeon, I guess. What always seems to happen with the last episode of uh, the dungeon uh, happened with the forest temple as well, where things just seem to go wrong uh, with with my recording playing myself. Uh, that didn't sound right. Uh, so, seemed to happen on the last episode of the dungeon. They've certainly given you a lot of these small boxes here, I've noticed, since you only really need one. For some reason there's an extra door here with a set of, uh, I think they're wooden or stone 
stairs leading to them and uh, I've never really found out what's there um, because the, the strategy guy didn't tell me to and I only really found out about it by accident uh, because I was trying all of the doors to see if I could find uh, the, the right one, find out where to go next and uh, I accidentally went in this place and there was a big cavern uh, that you could fall in but there were a couple of jars uh, against the wall and if you went through that I don't remember uh, I I don't remember where it leads to but I didn't really I didn't really fully explore it I just kind of got in there and realised that it didn't go to where I wanted it to go and then I left. Okay, that was confusing. I said I didn't know where it went and then I said, told you that I had gone in there and uh, found that, that I didn't remember where it led to. So obviously I knew it where it led to, I just forgot. Uh, see, this, this recording's not going to be fun. I really would actually like someone to, um, to do uh, a joint commentary with me on one of these Let's Plays, but uh, I want it to be someone I know and even if it wasn't someone I know, no one um, has no Let's Players really offered. And then there's the logistics problem as well, because I live in Northern England and a lot of other people don't. So, for some reason I thought you couldn't jump up here. I don't know why. And I actually ended up uh, redoing this fire puzzle and then realizing that it had no effect at all if you leave this room all of the fires go out but that door remains free from bars but you won't know that until you actually walked up to the door and checked so i left the room to see if i had gone the the wrong way to the wrong place and when i came back i tried to relight all of the fires until i realized that that door was already um open and you could go through it but that's because i hadn't tried simply jumping up to the price with the door in it so i thought ah uh, there must be a different door that you need to go through. It must be this door, and this door turned out to be the door that I came into the room in the first place through. So. You do not want to fall down there when uh, you hit that thing with that. This is a very annoying game mechanic which I hate. Uh, this this room is highly irritating and at this point in the game play I was getting quite annoyed <laughs> I have to say. Right so what Navi is doing now is uh, since he's gone turned green and flown up to a particular point above you she's indicating that you need to play uh, the Song of Time there. But you need to be in exactly the right price. You need to be at exactly the price where Navi flies up and turns green. If you're in slightly the wrong spot, then nothing will happen. So don't get confused about that. I ended up getting confused about it and stuck for ages.
see lots of little things, just just like that, where you try to jump up to something and you s just slightly miss it. Lots of little things like that just went wrong. I don't know why, but just did. Now you might briefly have heard the sound of a gold scotler there. I spent several minutes looking for it, but I can't find the gold scotula that's in this room. Uh, you don't have to bomb the walls, or not as far as I can tell. And I'm just not sure what you have to do to get it. Maybe it's somewhere below me. I don't know. And just pressing the wrong button, like pressing the button for the hook shot, rather than for the hammer uh, or the, the ocarina rather than the hammer just little things didn't work the way they're supposed to So I have been trying to get a Star Trek game to work on my PC because I want to do it for my next Let's Play and um, I'm trying to work out if I should have it going sort of parallel to this so that I, I have two games going on at once and whether I can manage to do that without uh, without having to have one episode of this less uh, have episodes of this uploaded less frequently which is not something I want because I think we're already on eight days for this one uh, I got lost in these files for a little while there and cut that bit out I'm freely admitting that. So yeah, I'm trying to see if I can do that and I'll keep you posted on that. The problem at the moment seems to be that it's 32-bit uh, compatible and I uh, have a 64-bit version of Windows, whatever the heck that means. So that's my problem right now and I am trying to solve that. There are a lot of gold sculptures in this dungeon. Uh, well, I talked about uh, a job I was I was trying to get in the last episode. I didn't manage to get it, but never mind. There were still lots of prospects to go, but I thought I might as well mention that fact that I haven't got it. So, see, this is a place where I tried to do this right for ages, but I uh, kept being in the wrong spot. Um, I couldn't quite stand where Navi wanted me to. Something uh, I've been thinking about is Daruni or or Darunia, whatever. Just just call him whatever you want. You know, uh, some things you might not want to call him to his face, but uh, anyway, um, we haven't seen him in ages, and when you finally face full vagina, <laughs> uh, he's he said that he was going to go and look for full vagina, but um, he isn't there, uh, so. I just wonder where he's gone, that's all. Where, where is he whilst Link is doing this? I mean, Link has already freed all of his uh, brothers, or the other Gorons, so perhaps he's with them. I don't know.
Ah, now this might be the sculpture I could hear earlier. That's a possibility. Recently, sort of on and off, because the Stanley Parable didn't take that long, and because I, I already, I'd already played it a few times, uh, not the Stanley Parable, the other game I'm about to talk about now, uh, I'd already owned it for a while, I was just taking a break to play the Stanley Parable. Anyway, uh, recently I've been playing a game called Command and Conquer Red Alert 2, which is very good. Uh, it's it's one of those games where you sort of control an army, and and you have to you have to build things like weapons and things like that. I've forgotten what that kind of game is called, but it's one of those games. It is very good. I would recommend it. The the music's excellent. It's got this uh, very appropriate sounding kind of uh, 80s rock track about it, but not 80s rock in a kind of middle-aged man music sort of way, if you see what I mean. It's, it's, it's not rock music that used to sound cool but is no longer cool, it's rock music that actually sounds quite cool. And it's just really fun to play, you know, it's one of those games that's enjoyable because it is just really, really fun to play some games, you know, you'll play them and and you'll go wow these graphics are amazing and some games you'll play them because they're kind of part of the franchise like this and some guys are ga ga games games definitely games is what they're called uh, you've got to avoid those bars there uh, some games you'll play just because they're really really fun and really, really addictive, and this is one of them. Uh, Red Alert 2 is one of them. I think this is the last enemy we face before Vol Vagina. Actually, you can use your hook shot instead of bombs, I didn't realise that whilst I was recording this, but um, a strategy guide revealed it to me later. I wish I thought of that. Again, you don't want to go on that moving platform yet. You need to grab the key first.
Why Do Light 2 isn't a game that takes itself seriously either. This is quite nice, quite fun uh, thing about it that I like. I don't really see what the point in this room is. You could easily just go go from here into the room that's above this and not have to have this uh, this mesh to climb up, which isn't a difficult thing to do at all. And it's it's incredibly easy to navigate this room. It's pretty clear where you're supposed to go. So I don't really see the point. Now this room, this room is such a pain, I hate this room, I do, this is one of the most horrible things about this game, it's almost as bad as some of the rooms in the water temple. Okay, um, as you'll see in a minute, you need to get to a particular location in this room that's high above you very quickly. And there are two ways to do it. One way is the way that I eventually ended up doing it, which you'll see in a minute. And the other way is to uh, call the Scarecrow using the Scarecrow song. And that makes it easier because it just appears in the right place and you can then hook shot to it. So in theory, I should be able to just play the Ocarina and no problem, uh, get up there in two seconds. But instead I ended up doing this, which was very difficult to do, quickly enough without falling down. It took me a very, very long time, because if you don't kick that chest quick enough, the fire will appear around it again. I don't know what uh, about kicking the chest makes the fire stop, but for some reason it doesn't appear if you kick the chest. So, my only explanation for why the scarecrow thing didn't work and the strategy guide specifically says that it should although I've never actually gotten it to work, is that I clearly haven't activated the Scarecrow using the Scarecrow song yet, so I will have to go and talk to the Scarecrow as an adult in the next episode. And the annoying thing about this, well, I spent literally 20 minutes in that room trying to get the Scarecrow to arrive and then uh, trying to use the other method where I fell down and fell down again and fell down again and fell down again. Anyway, uh, the other thing is that you get one single measly key from it and then you jump back down to where you were before in order to get into this room. It's just not worth the effort. But the game doesn't give you any choice. I realize it's possible that my copy has a glitch. I'm not sure if, if glitches exist on uh, ROMs, but that's, that's the other explanation I can think of. I quite like the way the staircase uh, goes down like this. I do wonder with them, them creating this, this dungeon, the people who created the game, if they had a plan where like they said 
Okay, let's let's make this floor be be like this, and let's have it have three rooms: one there, and one there, and one there. And then let's put a tower here, and then let's arrange these things around the tower. If they do it like that, or if so, they had a a specific kind of building plan for what room what they wanted the interior rooms to be like like you would have a house where you'd say whilst where the architect would say why right, let's have the living room here and the kitchen here and whatever or um did they just go right we need a space here so that uh, there can be some sort of puzzle that Link can do. So let's make a room here. What puzzle are we going to put in this room? Did they do it that way? Or did they have something in mind for specifically what they want to do with the interior space of this temple? You might have noticed that he falls a very, very, very long way and does not get hurt at all. I mean, if I fell that far, I don't think I'd be able to stand up for several minutes. My knees would hurt a lot. I don't know if that's a glitch, either, but somehow he manages to sort of gracefully, cat-like, kind of jump onto it without hurting himself. It looks kind of Chinese, this, this dragon, I think. Seriously, they must have known people would make fun of its name. Like, like the Winnie the Pooh stories. A.A. Mill must have known that people would make fun of the name of his main character. Turns out you can actually use the hook shot for this thing as well, and not use the arrows. Uh, I like the way that it has uh, this sort of hair made out of fire, that it can kind of flick around. I think that's cool. I tried to do this with uh, the minimum amount of sort of extra save games that the emulator lets me have because I thought this this isn't nearly as bad as Phantom Ganon. This is a much easier boss and so I thought I would try to beat it as legitimately as possible. But you can see there the way it sort of flicked its hair around. I think that's cool. And it's a cool looking boss and this is actually one of my favourite bosses from this game. It sort of reminds me of fighting uh, Iblis on uh, Sonic 06. The dreaded Sonic 06. Apparently you can only fire arrows at it, uh, or they'll only hit it rather when it's directly facing you. Like that. So I wasted a lot of arrows here. Annoyingly. But yeah, uh, this bit in Sonic 06 where you uh, you face not at all cool looking boss actually looks quite revolting called Iblis and um, it's on it's it's a kind of kind of lava boss um, it's there's this big pool of lava and you have to jump from um, rock to to rock in order to get it. And it just sort of looks a bit like this floor here. And um, Iblis also makes these rocks fall down on you. So it's pretty similar to this. But this is uh, it's a cooler boss. And this fight is nowhere near as frustrating. And the controls for this fight actually work. So there you go.
This is sort of a middling boss in terms of difficulty. It's not that hard, it's not that difficult, it's sort of average. I think it's maybe still a little harder than the bosses the Child Link had to face, but it's okay in terms of hardness, this boss. It has a pretty simple uh, pattern to memorize. It now occurs to me that I could have used my shield to great effect uh, at this point to block the rocks and I also didn't think of that either. Every dragon has to be far. It's it's just a necessary part of dragonness. At this point I probably looked at the strategy guide because apparently I've now discovered that you can use a hookshot. This was a very cool death sequence. See, I like the way its body sort of changes into a skeleton of itself like that, and then the skeleton kind of crumbles around it. Link, and the hand is just left there. It's uh, it's morbidly cool. And now Link is of course able to stand on the lava. If he stood on earlier, would have hurt him, because that makes perfect sense. gone. I'll notice that um, as you go on through the game. And there are some other quite helpful changes as well. So. Well, I think it's a bit of a pity that he turns out to be one of the sages, because I think he should have got his own game. I, I would buy a game with him as the hero, just kind of the adventures of the Gorons. I think that would be, uh, I think that would be a very good kind of spin-off to this. I've heard that uh, Netflix are currently working on a TV series based on Legend of Zelda, which I think will either be great or it will turn out to be utterly horrible. But I would be surprised if it turns out to be to, to not polarize fans in some way. Anyway, we're coming up to the end of this episode. In the next episode, we'll be leaving the Temple of Fire and doing some side quests. And so I'll say uh, goodbye for now.